Today you're going to be amazed at how I used four squares to make seven different cards. Let's get started. This is the four square window stencil from A Colorful Life Designs. As you can see, there are four perfectly spaced squares in the center, and there are guidelines etched into the stencil itself to show you how to place your A2 size panel so the squares are perfectly centered. You also get the four squares that were cut from the stencil, and you can use these as masks in your card designs. Today I'm also trying out my new stick and stamp mat from Brutus Monroe. It's a sticky mat that holds your paper and your stencil in place, and I've got some tips for using it, so stick around for those, get it? Let's start basic. I position my panel onto the mat using the guidelines, and then I put the stencil down over top, using the guidelines on the stencil to position it perfectly. If you don't like to measure, these tools are great for quickly getting everything lined up. I'm using the little squared cutouts as masks. I'm not 100% confident about them since they seem to shift around a little bit, so I ended up taping them down before blending party dress ink into that top left square. I'm putting down a lighter layer here for now. Here's the Simple Hill 2 stencil. It comes with two pieces that fit together perfectly to help you mask the ground and sky when you build scenes, but I'm actually going to use the straight bottom edge to mask half my square before going back in with another layer of the same ink. Then I shift my square mask to open up the next hole. I also cleaned away some of the pink ink so that my limoncello ink won't pick any of that up and get contaminated. Again, I do two layers of the ink, but this time I mask the opposite portion of the square. I moved on to the bottom right square and Lime Ricky ink, and I did the same two layers again. And I shifted the mask so that the second layer of ink is always on the outside corner. You could do them all the same if you want, but I felt like this gave me a bit of a frame. Finally, for that fourth corner, I used Fiesta Blue ink. When I removed this stencil, I could see that the squares were not 100% perfect masks, and there is a tiny bit of blue in my pink. So next time, I would either tape off the edges or just be a little more careful with my ink blending. The best way to remove your panel from this sticky mat without curling the cardstock is to curl the mat back. Don't bend it back too far or you might break it, but once you get the two ends of the panel free, you can carefully pull the rest of it away and it's perfectly flat. To finish this card, I cut a circle from the center of the panel and I popped it up with foam tape for some dimension. I added a rabbit hole designs thanks die cut sentiment. Now here's another simple way to use this stencil. This time I'm starting with a square panel and the lines on the sticky mat keep it easy to line up. What I noticed is that the mat actually holds the stencil so I don't even need to tape it down which is really nice. This time I'm going to use the curved side of the hill stencil and just Fiesta Blue ink to create some snow drifts in each window. I'm blending with a really light hand to fill in the sky and then I move the hill down a little and I blend it even lighter to give my snow some more dimension. You can move the hill in whatever angle you want to get different looks, and you can flip the stencil over to get the reverse slope. I did make sure to get just a little bit of blending at the bottom of all the windows so that the squares would be complete. To finish this card, I added a couple of die-cut snowflakes and a piece die-cut that I swiped Fiesta Blue ink onto. I added stickles to the edge of the panel for some sparkle. Okay, now let's put a spin on this. I've got the stencil on my panel, but this time it's on an angle. Again, the lines on the mat are helping me line it up perfectly by ensuring that the corners run along the center line on the mat. Now, I don't know what I was thinking when I grabbed this acetate because we already know that the flat edge of that hill stencil works really well as a mask, but this does too. So if you don't have a stencil like that, using acetate is a great way to get a reusable straight edge mask. This time I fill in each square with a different color, again with that lighter first layer level of inking. While the stencil was still in place, I wiped off the ink around it, and then I laid the boho medallion stencil over top. Any pattern stencil would work here, but I like the idea of a circular design so that I can put the center of the design right in the center of the four squares. Now this time I do need some tape because while the square stencil is stuck to the mat, the boho stencil will not stick to the square stencil. I didn't think to try my pixie spray because that's way over in my spray station, but let me know if you've tried pixie spray stencil to stencil and whether or not it worked. Now what I did was I blended the ink that was next to the square through. So the green square got blue on top, the yellow square got green, the pink square got yellow, and then the blue square got pink. Those four blends added four more colors to my color palette and gave the card a whole different look. 
To finish this card, I cut a circle from the middle of the design and then turned it so the squares lined up with the opposite side. I layered up three different daisies from a Jillian Vance design. If you look closely, the edges of each layer of petals lines up with the design elements. And I stamped a simple happy birthday sentiment. Okay, so now what if you want to use this stencil on an A2 card with six squares? Here's some easy tips for lining it up. Make sure your panel is lined up so you can see the center line both vertical and horizontal. Then line the stencil up so that the bottom row of squares is centered on that horizontal centering line, like this. Then blend the ink through. This time I'm going to do a continuous rainbow pattern. I start with yellow because it's my lightest color, then pink, not quite filling that bottom row. Then I cleaned and shifted the stencil so that the top row of the stencil is over the bottom row of ink blended squares, and then I blended blue ink and finally green ink. To finish this card, I added a black daisy die cut from Crafty Meraki and a heat embossed sentiment. I always think rainbow looks even better with a pop of black for contrast, don't you? Now what else can we do with this idea? This time, I lined the squares up right at the top of the page and filled in the whole column with the same technique of shifting the stencil down. To make it go faster, I just eyeballed the spacing between the yellow and pink blocks, and that meant that I could do all four rows in two sessions of blending, but if you want absolute precision, you can overlap like I did in the last card and get that spacing exactly right. Once the four rows were blended, I went back and I placed the stencil down the same column, but at a different position horizontally, so the squares will overlap. Then I blended the color that wasn't in the squares, so when I see blue and yellow I used pink, and so on. This gave me a full rainbow down these two stripes. You can position the stencil so that it's even like I did here, or you could get a fun look by placing it so that the stripes end up all being different widths. Now as it turned out, I didn't get them lined up exactly, so I trimmed them down into strips to clean up the edges, and I added them to the top and bottom of a piece of black cardstock for my card panel. I added a stacked up thank you from Waffle Flower. For my last card, I started with the four squares in the center and I filled them with Fiesta Blue ink. You may have noticed that I use brushes rather than foams, and that's because the bristles don't get damaged by the stencil edges in the same way that foam tools can. Now I'm shifting the stencil all over to fill the whole panel with those evenly spaced squares. You could fill each square in different colors if you wanted to create a rainbow look, but I'm actually planning a whole other layer of squares when I get this done. To clean off the sticky mat, I just used a baby wipe. You could also use water and it'll get rid of ink or paste if you do it while your paste is still wet. Once the cleaned mat has been dried, it'll be sticky again. Now I'm lining up the stencil again, offsetting it so that the center of the pattern is actually in the center of one of the solid blue squares. Then I just blended Lime Ricky ink through the stencil, shifting it and adding more Lime Ricky ink until the whole panel is filled again. This is giving me an almost plaid pattern in these fresh cool colors, and there's still little bits of white popping through. The translucence of these Catherine Pooler inks allows you to see the blue, the green, and the blend where they overlap. Now here's another look at cleaning the sticky mat. It comes with a clear sheet of acetate that you can keep on it when you're not using it so it won't get dusty, but cleaning it off with water or a baby wipe takes away any of your inks and paste and leaves it ready to use again. I made two cards with this background. For the first one, I cut a circle from it and I replaced it with a solid Fiesta Blue circle and added a Penny Black Happy Birthday sentiment. For the second card, I used the I Made You a Cake die set from Penguin Palace Stamps and I used the plaid circle to cut my icing for the cake. I added some stickles along the frosting edges and on the candle flames for a bit of sparkle. Stencils with basic shapes can be used in so many ways. They really give you great value for your money, even on their own and using them together with other stencils just gives you even more options. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.